Greetings, Bill Mobley, Chair of Neurosciences, for another edition of On Our Mind. Uh, I'm meeting today with Diane Jacob, a county supervisor, really the chair of the county supervisors. And this is going to be the first in a series of short presentations discussing the biology, the impact of Alzheimer's disease, essentially an upcoming uh, epidemic here in San Diego as well as in the rest of the world. So, Diane, welcome. Thank you. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you, uh, what your position uh, entails and, and your passion for Alzheimer's disease. Well, this year I'm honored to be the chairperson of our San Diego County Board of Supervisors. We're a county of 3.1 million people, so we're as large as many states in this country. So it's a big deal. There are five county supervisors. We're locally elected, and this year as chair, I have a chance to lay out my agenda, and the focus is Alzheimer's disease, both from the cure and the care standpoint. In San Diego County alone, we have 60,000 people today that are living with Alzheimer's disease, and that number is expected to double in the next 15 years. And one out of three people over the age of 65 will die of Alzheimer's disease. It is an epidemic and a growing epidemic, not just here in San Diego County, but throughout the country. And what was astounding to me, I went to a conference a little over a year ago. Uh, it was put on by the Alzheimer's Association. And because of the devastation of this disease and the fact that a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, basically, at least right now, is a death sentence, that I saw the small amount of money that our federal government is putting into Alzheimer's research, about $562 million this year. But the annual cost to our nation each and every year, $200 billion. Need to step up to the plate and put more money into research, help our researchers here in San Diego and those that they connect up, but also the care side. We have 150,000 people that are taking care of Alzheimer's and related dementia folks in their homes. 80% of Alzheimer's patients are being taken care of their homes. Those caregivers need some help too. So we've launched the Alzheimer's Project in San Diego County, working with our top-notch researchers in the San Diego region to try to come up with some recommendations of how the County of San Diego, as the largest public health agency, can partner with our research community to help in coming up with a cure, or at least some way to postpone the progression of this deadly disease. And then also on the care side, we're working with the caregivers and some of the residential facilities hoping to report out the end of the year, December 2nd, at a Board of Supervisors conference of what those recommendations would be moving forward. It's all about teamwork, it's all about partnerships, and the county to partner with the brightest and the best researchers we have and then those that are caring for their loved ones. Sounds like a unique effort. I'm not aware of any place in the country where a whole county has decided we're gonna understand and treat Alzheimer's disease. We're going to understand the problems that caregivers had and we're going to support them. Uh, you should be congratulated for that. That's wonderful. Are there other places that are doing it quite this way? I don't know. I, I know there's attention through other parts of the country on this particular disease at the state level, but I don't know of any other county mm -hmm. that is embarked on an effort such as this. So we're, we're hoping we can establish a model for the rest of the state and country Great. and world. Great. Who knows? Every one of us has a story about Alzheimer's disease. I'm wondering as a county supervisor, are there any stories that you've heard that are particularly poignant, concerning to you? There's a couple that come to my mind. I have a very dear friend and I remember many years ago talking with her and her husband and she was really struggling trying to complete sentences couldn't quite remember certain recent events, and her husband would kind of fill in for her. And then uh, it progressively got worse. There was never a diagnosis specifically for what she had. Uh, they attributed it to her falling and hitting the back of her head, and, and that was contributing to the loss of memory. 
But eventually, as I visited her, she was in a facility. She did not know me, and it was very, very sad. I suspect that diagnosis was Alzheimer's or a related dementia. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think oftentimes, unfortunately, Alzheimer's is either misdiagnosed or not diagnosed at all. I think you're right. And, and, and now with the effort in this county, it seems to me we have an opportunity to bring forward to public awareness the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and really means by which people who are worried or concerned or family members can actually now uh, access doctors who can really make that diagnosis promptly and with great confidence and get those people as much help as possible. That, that, that's a big part of the effort. And I, I recall another story that mm -hmm. happened not too long ago. Uh, it was a, a woman that, that lived in one of our cities and she walked out of the house and she was in the street and she took off all her clothes, which as I understand, often is the case with Alzheimer's patients. The neighbors seeing this called 911. So if you can imagine, here's this elderly woman, no clothes on, all these black and white police cars coming up with sirens blaring, and the woman, it was found out, had Alzheimer's, but the neighbors didn't know it. Mm. So it really calls out for attention to this disease, the symptoms, and to, be, to talk about it and had, for example, the neighbors in this, in this neighborhood known that this woman had Alzheimer's, they would not have called 911. Police had, would not have arrived. They probably would have just called the family or whomever was taking care of her. So there's a, a huge need for a widespread public education campaign. It's a disease people have not wanted to talk about right. and still today don't want to talk about. We must talk about it. We must engage not only our research and our caregiver community, but the entire community in San Diego and throughout the country. We agree. It's, a, it's such an important thing. So it's not just educating the family. It's educating the whole county about this disorder, about its consequences for the well-being of the county, not just individuals, but a whole county. But that takes a team. And the team you're putting together has many elements. Yes, it does. I mean, let's talk about just the cure side, that working with UCSD and some of the top not, notch researchers here, working with Sanford Burnham researchers, Scripps Research, and then Salt. I mean, we've got the brightest and the best right here in San Diego County working on trying to find a cure, coming at it from a couple different angles, different opinions. Uh, I think if it's going to be done, it'll be done right here in this county. But then in the meantime, before we find a cure, we've got a lot of people and a growing population of those that are going to be diagnosed with the disease that need care. So we need the education campaign. We need to provide training, not just training for caregivers, respite care for those caregivers. They need a break from now, now and then. Uh, and then education for law enforcement and hospital personnel, uh, first responders, to know more about what the signs are of the disease so they will not misdiagnose or mistake a person who has Alzheimer's for something else. That's very, very important as we try to take better care of our community and provide a support system. The Alzheimer's Association does an excellent job so they're a partner, too, in this. That's great. You know, I'm just thinking about the numbers. 60,000 doubled is 120,000. If you say there are three caregivers for every person who has Alzheimer's disease, now we're talking about 360,000. We're talking about a half a million people out of three million either with Alzheimer's disease or caring for someone with Alzheimer's disease. That's a frightening number. That's one-sixth of the county. Yes. Yes. And it's not unique here. In fact, all cities and all towns and all countries will be dealing with these kinds of numbers. It's frightening. It's more frightening in some way than the disease. And so we're so proud of you taking a leadership role in pulling together the various elements of a team that can make a difference for care and for cure. Diane, thanks for being with us. Great pleasure to be with you and to be a part of your team. Thank you.
So this has been on our mind, the first of a series of presentations looking at Alzheimer's disease, looking at the biology of it, the way the brain is affected, ideas about how it's caused and how it might be prevented. Indeed, the goal ultimately of this work is to prevent Alzheimer's disease so that someday one will be able to say, although there are other issues in my life, I will never get Alzheimer's disease. That's our goal. We won't be there tomorrow, but with your help, we'll get there. Thanks very much for being with us.